My name is Fugazi and I'm also a guy and this is my review for Demon Slayer Hinokami Chronicles. For this review, I'm going to do things a little bit different. I'm going to change up the format. So instead of giving my verdict at the end of the video, I decided that I'm going to do it in the beginning of the video and kind of explain why the game is the rating that I gave it. And you know, it's going to be like the same format, just the ratings up front. So you already know what I'm thinking and we're going to spend the video justifying that. For me, Demon Slayer is a 6 out of 10 game. Demon Slayer has an extreme lack of content for a $60 to $70 game. It's borderline insulting to the fans and players for this game to be released in its current state and to be charged at this price for it. Luckily, what saves Demon Slayer is its strong combat system. And I'm sure when they release DLC for this game, it'll make the rating better. You know, it's just the lack of content really hits it hard. So just keep that in mind. And I'm sorry if you really like this game and I'm like trashing on it. I'm not really trashing on it. It's my job as a reviewer to look at things from a neutral standpoint. I'm a huge fan of Demon Slayer, but I have to review it honestly and I can't just give into the hype. I try to be as genuine as possible when I do these and look at everything from a factual standpoint. All right, so let's get into it. So first off, I want to talk about the story mode. So basically the story mode is a classic anime game story mode. You know, you play through the classic moments of the anime, you know, all that shit. Basically the story mode is kind of a chore to play through. I literally play it just to unlock the characters, obviously, and see the cool cutscenes. Demon Slayer gives you like the illusion of it's like an open world or like you can explore the areas a lot but it's actually pretty linear and it feels like it's only there for padding like just to like stretch out the game and make it longer. Some of these are extremely hard to get through especially when they'll make the character walk slow for no reason and it for so long too and it's like holy fuck hurry up like it's irritating to play through and it's just stupid when you're in these little exploration areas or whatever the fuck you want to call it you'll get attacked by some filler demons and you fight them and they all kind of have the same move set and then tandro will do the exact same animation every single time and that's also fucking irritating like you guys couldn't have added more than one animation i know it sounds like i'm shitting on this kind of i mean i kind of am because this shit's stupid but it's like what the fuck like you guys are so good at like doing the cool cutscenes, but like you really can't give this guy another fucking animation if i gotta fight nine filler demons like come on really like i gotta be the one to say this no one's gonna say this i gotta be the one when you fight like the actual demons from the anime this is actually where the story mode becomes fun because you relive those moments from the game and you're fighting a cool boss fight where uh, each boss is like their own they have their own move set they're never the same and these are the best parts of the story mode also they have that like quick time button shit i don't know what it's called quick time event i don't know from like storm and i think kakarot has them too i can't remember yeah those are back i mean they're cool but it's like i want to watch the cool cut scene but i don't want it to press shit whatever fuck it Quick side note, can we stop adding super armor in these games? It's so annoying and it's so stupid. And it's kind of a cheap gimmick to add like artificial difficulty. Like, oh, oh no, I can't hit him. He has fucking super armor. Like, ah, no, it's whack. So like I said, my Kakarot review, because this is a CC2 game, there's three different kinds of cutscenes that you'll see in the story. You'll see the really fucking cool ones, the sick ones that are amazing, immaculate quality, and like everything is beautiful. You have the okay ones where it's like, all right, well, this is all right. And then you have the shitty diarrhea PlayStation 2 graphics. So basically what I'm saying is the story is a total drag to get through. So there's a shop in this game where you can use in-game money to buy characters, costumes, online profiles. I'll get to the online shit later. And you could buy a bunch of stuff and like there's ways to get money through the story mode by picking up the money. Or like doing certain challenges like get 50 wins and ranked or just play 50 matches stuff like that so i know i've been talking mad shit about this game but i was actually surprised at how good the gameplay is the gameplay is amazing in this game and i was so surprised because i thought this was just going to be another storm 4 clone or whatever storm 5 whatever you want to say but i was surprised that it's actually unique and feels pretty good each character feels unique and fluid in their own way Combat is flashy and easy for beginners to pick up, and more experienced players, you can do some pretty sick combos. There are light and heavy attacks you can use as well as a grab. You could dash front, back, side to side, as well as dash towards your opponent. You could also reflect attacks while you're blocking, and this will push back your opponent a little bit while they're attacking you and let you kind of get in there and do your shit. There's also a surge meter that lets you power up your character mid-fight, as well as an ultimate meter, which, you know, lets you do your ultimate attack. You can also pick two characters to play with. While you're using one, you could use meter to have your other one assist you. Spend one bar to have your teammate attack the opponent, or you could spend two to have them save you from a combo. You can also switch between these characters as long as you have some meter. So I guess there's 18 characters in the game. Realistically, there's only 12. The other six are fucking reskins, and they're literally the same character. They just have, like, a different ultimate attack. It's, it's not really... I wouldn't count them as characters at all, to be honest with you, because they're not. Can I just, like, ask a question real quick? Like... Where the fuck are all the characters? Like, how the fuck is there only 12 in this game? I'm not counting those other characters. They don't count. They're bullshit. They don't not. They don't count. They don't. Where the fuck are all the characters? You know, I paid 60, 70 bucks. I have 12 characters, and we use two of them in the fights. So let's do the math on that. I'm not going to do the math. I'm not good at math. But, like, you know, I'm using, like, a lot of the roster just in that one fight with those two characters. There's only fucking 12. You know what I mean? Like, what the fuck? Where the fuck are the demons? Like, what the fuck? 
So you can play online or offline. Offline modes consist of like training and like, you know, 1v1. You know, like classic play the computer, play a person shit. As of right now, online only consists of ranked matches and player matches. Like where the fuck is tournament mode in Endless Battle? Or even like a spectator mode where you can watch people fight. Like what the fuck? Where's the content? Where is everything? What the fuck? This shit pisses me off because this game's fucking fun too. Like the fighting's really good, but there's nothing here. There's literally nothing else. There's nothing to do. You have 12 characters. There's no fucking modes, but the fighting's really good, which actually surprised me because I thought it was going to be a clone, like I said before. And it just pisses me off way more than it would have done if everything just sucked. If everything would have just sucked, it would have been fine. But the fighting's fucking awesome, and it pisses me off because there's so much potential, and they decided to put out poop. Like, you know, I mean, it's not fucking poop, but it's like, it's like, what the fuck, you know? It's like, I guess I would just say what the fuck is my response to that. But it's like, what the fuck? Like, where is everything? What the fuck? Basically, I was hoping Demon Slayer would be the change that anime games needed. Something that would raise the bar for anime games. Demon Slayer does none of that. It repeats the same cycle of lackluster games we've been accustomed to. That being said, if you're a fan of Demon Slayer, yes, you'll have fun playing this. If you're like, don't really know what Demon Slayer is, or you're not really a fan, I can't recommend this to you personally. Not until like a later date when there's more content in here because as of right now this game is not a $60 game. It's not a $70 game. This feels more of like a $30 to $40 game. There's no content. There's no content that justifies the price point it's at. And I can't recommend this in its current state. I will give it a 6 out of 10, like I said before. And it is what it is, you know? I, it bums me out to have to do that. Because I was really looking forward to this game. I had doubts. But my doubts actually flipped. I was doubting the combat system because I thought it was going to be Storm 4 clone. But it actually surprised me. And, you know, I guess the lack of content I didn't see coming, which really sucks. So, yeah. Anyways, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe, all that shit. And uh, thank you for watching. And, I'm, you know, I'm going to be playing Demon Slayer because I do enjoy fighting the combat system. It's really good. And that's what's keeping me engaged in it. But besides that, there's nothing there.